G'day John for the hot end. Today we're doing part three of the Fogatec FT5 build review. Okay, today uh, is part three of the build review on the Fogatec FT5 large format printer. Uh, hopefully you've seen part one and part two and you know what this is about, but I'll quickly recap. Uh, John Folger sent us out a couple of FT5s to review. Mine is to review the actual build process and the uh, instructions and the kit, and Anthony will be doing the printer itself. Now I've got a lot to get through, so I've got a couple of notes, so if you see me looking down, um, my memory isn't what it used to be. So. Uh, let's get straight into it. I was going to do this in my uh, office at home, but I don't have enough equipment, so we're using Anthony's studio again. Okay, my opinions on the build of the FT5. You have to remember that when I built my FT5 was a couple of weeks ago, and that's a long time in internet talk, uh, and things have changed since I built mine. Mine was built using version 6 of the build manual. Uh, there is now a version 7 and there'll probably be a version eight. Now, my recommendations for anyone that's gonna build this kit, read the manual, go right through it uh, from start to finish so that you've got an overview of what you're trying to do and absorb as much as you can from the other resources that are available. Now, there are several resources in addition to the manual. There's the manual itself, which is on the Folgatech uh, Google Drive. There's also the Folgatech customer notes spreadsheet which is invaluable with all the little um, intricacies of things that people have found while they're building. There's also the Folgatech 3D printing Facebook group. Um, there are some very clever people uh, in that group. Another place that you'll get excellent information is the uh, Facebook group which is the 3D printing geeks. This group is one that's managed by myself. You will get uh, a lot of information on that in our group as well. They will be there to answer any questions while you're building. There will be questions. Uh, there are people from various time zones, including myself, and uh, if you get stumped, uh, don't sit and fret about it. Just type in a question and you'll have an answer within minutes. And uh, also don't forget that there's plenty of uh, YouTube advice out there. Uh, most of the good stuff will come from the hot end of course. And don't forget that the hot end has a discount code. Now I'll talk more about discount codes and the like at the end of the presentation. Now there's also the Folga Forum. Uh, that has a lot of information as well. Uh, and I really highly recommend that you absorb as much of all that as possible before you even start. I'm not going to go through this as a build guide and uh, tell you that you put part A to part B, etc, etc. This is purely my view of the build process. I guess first and foremost, the thing to remember is that you're building a precision machine. It's capable of printing down to 50 microns, which is it's pretty good for a large format printer. The main thing you've got to remember when assembling the mechanical side of the printer is to be accurate and precise. Make sure everything is square and everything fits nicely. You build it as it says in the instructions, you won't have any problem because it will be square. If you don't uh, and you make a, a mistake somewhere and, and the frame isn't square, then you're going to have a lot of trouble with your sliding rails and lead screws and what have you later on when you actually get to to the end part of the build. Okay, when I was building my FT5 I really had no major dramas. I followed the instructions step by step. Uh, as I said I absorbed all the information that I could from the other sources and as far as the mechanical build goes, it was fine. I had no problems at all. The little errors that were in version six, uh, I'd already been aware of from the other groups. So when I came to those errors, I knew what to expect. 
Those errors of course have since been fixed in version 8 and in subsequent versions which are probably already out by the time you see this. There was uh, a couple of problems that I had, whether it was just me or, or something to do with the instructions, I don't know. The biggest problem I had was orientation. I built mostly from the pictures rather than the text, which was much easier for me. But I found I had trouble identifying which was left and which was right, which was front and which was back. Uh, and because of that, I did a couple of things back to front. Uh, no major issues, no major disassembly to fix, but still would have been easier uh, had I identified it first. The main one that I did was the, uh, the cable chain on the Y axis was supposed to go forwards, uh, whereas mine goes backwards out the back of the printer. Now I could fix it, but looking at it, I'm going to leave it as it is because it gives you better access to the, to the build area. So I'm going to leave it as it is. It's no big deal. The wiring uh, for some people was a, a concern. I didn't have any problem with it. As I said, I was working off uh, an older version and I had to extend a couple of wires. Um, it was no big deal. Uh, it, as long as you follow the instructions, Use the schematic that's in the build guide and it's, it's easy, it really is. There's no, no soldering as such really, um, you can if you want, but it, it's a nice simple wiring job to, to do, everything is nice and straightforward. There were a lot of people making an error with the gap between the mid rail and the top rail uh, and confusing uh, in the manual where to get the measurement from. I also made the same mistake, but it's an easy one to fix again. Um, and I misread the manual. If you read the manual properly, it does tell you exactly what that gap is and how to measure it. Um, so it was my own fault. And for those that made the same mistake, well, you know, re read the manual and it does tell you how to do it properly. I did have a problem with the, uh, the GLCD in that the cabling for it, the ribbon cables, uh, had to be reversed in the back of the LCD, which meant that the, the tabs were no longer in the slots. I had to swap it around to get the LCD to work. This is an issue that um, Folgatech are aware of uh, and they'll be fixing that as well. I also found that uh, some of the connectors on the wiring were very fiddly for my short, fat, stumpy fingers. You have to actually remove the little metal pins from inside the plugs to feed the wiring through the cable chains and then put the pins back in the plugs. I found that tedious. Um, so in the end what I did was just cut the plugs off and join the wires. It was much simpler. Um, John Folger has told me that he's working on perhaps even doing a full wiring loom pre-made. That would be wonderful, but we'll wait and see on that one. The connectors for the AC, whether you're on 110 volts or like us, 240, I'm always a bit wary about working with AC voltages. The manual says to solder the wires to the back of the switch and the AC input. Uh, I didn't like that much. Um, I went out and got a $2 packet of uh, female spade connectors, uh, which are a crimp connector. Crimp those onto the wires and then it's just a matter of sliding them onto the, the male spade terminals and job done. Much neater, much cleaner, much safer in my opinion anyway. I also found that uh, when wiring to the power supply it was easier, again, go to your local store, get a $2 packet of uh, crimp wire connectors, the, the, the eyelet type uh, or the spade type, whichever you like, doesn't really matter, uh, and use those to connect to the power supply with the screws that are on the power supply rather than fiddling around trying to squish wires in and crimping them down with screws and it, it, it's just too fiddly. So if you crimp the terminals on, much easier. The last thing I will say about the, the build process really is that before you turn on that power supply, before you plug it into the wall, check your wiring, then check your wiring, then check your wiring again. 
and preferably walk away for an hour a day even and come back uh, and have another look at it because the last thing you want to do is fry everything when you turn it on. Fortunately with mine, um, I guess because I've built a few printers before, uh, as I said, I found this one easy. Everything went together well. I plugged the thing in, turned it on, uh, and away it went, basically. Uh, loaded the, the firmware, uh, started printing. Didn't even bother to level the bed properly. Just did a, a rough as good enough, yeah, that looks level and fired it up and started printing. This is the first print that I did on my FT5. This is a 40 millimeter test cube and really, uh, we'll, we'll post a close up photo of this, but it's, it's perfect, I can't fault it. There's no Z banding, there's no artifacts. It's just great, it's a perfect print. Straight out of the box, no problem. I did some other prints as well. Uh, I'm not gonna go too much into this because Anthony will be doing that, but this uh, is the uh, print for scale rocket or Thingiverse. Uh, it's in VARS mode, it's in Folgatec PLA. Uh, and again, uh, to me, it's a perfect print. I cannot fault this print in any way whatsoever. Then I thought we'll try PET G. So we went to the PET G, which you probably have seen the time lapse of the build of this while I've been talking. Um, again, look, I, I simply cannot fault the print. It, it is perfect. Um, so this is before I did any adjustments. Uh, I didn't do any, any uh, stepper driver adjustments. I didn't do any feed rate adjustments. Straight out of the box, this is what I got. So I'd have to say that this would be definitely one of the best printers that I've used. Uh, and I would say for the price, you would never find a printer better than this. Now, there are a few things that you must have with this printer that aren't included. One is a build fan. I don't know why, but printer manufacturers don't supply build fans, generally. Um, it would be easy just to put it in with the package, but anyway. You go to some of the sites that I mentioned, or Thingiverse, there's, there's heaps of build fan mounts that you can get. The only thing to remember with doing things like this, and this is particularly important, if you're going to put a build fan on, which, which you should, you need to run your wiring at the build stage so that you can run that wire through the cable chain and it's all nice and neat. Because if you try and mount it after you finish building, you're going to be swearing a lot uh, because you're going to have an extra wire dangling that you really shouldn't. So at the build stage, if you think you're going to need a print fan, lighting, uh, or anything else that needs to be around the extruder area, add that extra wiring at the build stage. So that's a must have. You will also need some good quality silicon grease to grease the vertical rods and the slides and the lead screw. Um, a little bit of grease makes a big difference and makes it run nice and smooth. Things that you might want to put on there that um, are optional you could put a, uh, and uh, there'll be some photos uh, behind me as I'm talking about this. You can put a, an adjustable Z end stop, again, which you can find on Thingiverse, they're everywhere. Uh, I put one on mine, makes life much easier when you're getting your uh, Z leveling. Uh, mine came with the, the red uh, PCB bed heater uh, and an aluminium build plate, which I promptly threw away because I don't like aluminium build plates. Uh, and I put a sheet of glass on there. Uh, printing on glass, much easier, much better. Uh, so you, by all means, get a sheet of glass. You'll find that to get the bed over 60, 70 degrees is difficult because it's so large. There's been a lot of talk about this of late. So just look up the, the different places that I mentioned and uh, there's a lot of discussion on how to get that bed to, to heat up nicely. You'll also see that I fitted a wire block to the extruder mount 
Uh, it comes with the green plastic connectors. Now these are there for the upcoming CNC upgrade that will go with this printer. I personally don't like the green connectors much, so I put this uh, terminal block on my extruder mount. I can now swap out thermistors, fans, um, heaters, anything you like in, in five seconds flat. It's just a matter of undoing the screws, drop the wiring out, put the new one in. Um, it doesn't look all that pretty, but it's very effective and that's how I like to see things nice and easy. You might also want to install a uh, bed, auto bed levelling device, be it a probe or a BL touch or something similar. Again, if you're going to do that, do the wiring at the build stage. Personally, I don't think it needs it. I think the, uh, the bed stays pretty level and, and as I said, I, I, haven't even, I still haven't done a full bed level on mine and, and I haven't had any problems. You just uh, do some perimeters and, and adjust while it's printing the perimeters and away you go. It's, auto bed leveling is overrated in my opinion. The extruder and hot end in the kit uh, could only be described as basic. Um, if you wanted to go to the extra expense and uh, upgrade the extruder and hot end, may or may not be worth it, depends on what you print with. Uh, I will probably be upgrading mine uh, and in a future video you will see a review on what I'll be fitting which is the BPS V3. Uh, this is it here. This extruder is made in Australia totally uh, and I'll tell you more about that when I do the review which will be posted in a couple of days time. Great little extruder and hot end setup. One last thing before I go, there's been conversation with John Folger and the hot end about a special edition FT5. We at the hot end, being Anthony and myself, have been in direct consultation with John Folger at Folger Tech and we are in the process of designing a mega FT5, if you want to call it that. It'll be the same build dimensions, but if you can think of an upgrade, a, uh, an improvement, a, a better operating procedure, uh, a better LCD, a better extruder, anything like that, if you can think of it, uh, we have as well, uh, and the hot end edition will have all of those things provided in the kit. It will be a U-Butte, bells and whistles, everything you could possibly want in a printer. Printer. Made with lightning! Real lightning! It will be more expensive, naturally. Uh, and I can't give you a date when it'll be released, but um, it will be the bee's knees of printers. Absolutely fantastic. Okay, just a couple of formalities to finish off with. The printers, filament and other bits and pieces that are sent to the hot end for review are all provided to us free of charge on the condition that we can review any product and give our honest opinion of that product. Anthony and myself do not receive any financial assistance, kickbacks, commissions or anything of that nature from the companies that provide things for review except for the discount code that we use for a couple of things. That code uh, is used at Folgatech. There is a discount code that uh, is the hot end, which can be used when purchasing Folgatech and Ararum. The hot end as a channel, not Anthony or myself personally, receive some commission when that code is used. That money is used to set up equipment for the videos that you are watching. All these things cost money and unfortunately neither of us could be deemed as wealthy. There's no cash here. Here, there's no cash, all right? Cash, no, Robo, no cash. There are other discount codes out there. Feel free to use them if you wish, but if you want to support the Hot End channel, please use the Hot End. Code. Okay, next time will be the BPS V3 extruder. We'll see you there.